Hello everyone, what are you expecting today? Because whatever you expect, that's exactly what you're going to receive. In today's video, I'm gonna share something with you that is going to take you from this perspective of manifesting an SP to a story where the SP runs after you, but you may not want them back. This is not very um, openly talked about. So I'm gonna share with you a client's story here because I believe everybody in the world goes through this, one point or another, and it's going to serve all of you that are watching this video. So, my client has been dating this uh, man for close to a year now. Initially, when they started, there was no intention behind the relationship. It was more of a, I like you, you like me, we're having fun, we're good together, um, why not enter into a relationship? It was more like, well, I got nothing else to do, might as well. They began to know each other and what transpired during these months was the fact that at certain points the man would hide the phone shut off the screen walk into another room sometimes at the park he would walk off or go in the restroom and never come out and just she began to notice certain behaviors in him and patterns that she hasn't noticed before not to say that they weren't there before maybe but she began to notice changes at which point he said that she's insecure and this caused a lot of resistance within her and caused her to leave the relationship at many times. She would leave, come back, leave, come back. As she went through this waste of energy, she began to reason within yourself, herself and say, all right, well, this is who I am. This is what I want to do with my life. This is my career. What do I really want? And immediately she came up with a decision, a desire of the heart and said, I want to be married. As she turned to open up the discussion, he uh, reluctantly, not resistant, but reluctantly would say a few words, but it was more at her when she approached it, like he never came to her to approach her with the conversation of marriage. So she saw that there was a, there was a lot of friction. She had to put force in it. At which point she made a complete decision to say, okay, um, I just don't feel comfortable anymore. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm seeing. There's hardly any changes. You can call me insecure. Um, I will stick with what I've seen and how I feel, how that behavior makes me feel, and um, I'm going to walk away. A couple of weeks later, he began to chase her. She immediately stated her decision once again and said, well, listen, this is what I'm looking for. This is what it is I want. I want to have the protection, the security, the love, the purity of mind, um, the comfort of you protecting my heart. Um, I want to have adventures with someone and I want to, you know, experience life at its fullest and I want to be able to um, to grow in my life and, and not consume myself with these things. At which he responded and said, well, you left me, you abandoned me. If I really wanted somebody by now, I would have had somebody by now. And it was this pattern of defensiveness. He never even picked up any conversation from her text. And it was during this time that she reached out to me. And so here's what I've said. I said, let's find out where he lives energetically. When you talk about marriage, what does he talk about? Anything else? When you say this, what does he say? Defensive. I said, first of all, you're not a match. You're not speaking the same language back and forth. He's not seeing the problem. You're coming up with a solution or your decision and he is off the subject at all times. If you approach something on purpose, he will deviate from that again. I said, this is a sign that he is internally misaligned. Because when a man speaks, speaks from the abundance of the heart. So right now the man feels as if you have abandoned him and that he hasn't done anything wrong, which is nothing but look at me, you've hurt me, I'm the victim here. Now, when somebody is at another level of awareness and this person is at the victim mentality, there's no emotional vibration uh, alignment. So what I have suggested to my client is to decide if she wants to invest or waste her energy. To waste is to continue to have these hababaluba back and forth texts and to invest is to continue to stand on her decision. Even though she said, I love him. I said, at the price of that, what is worth to you more? 
you being in a healthy, faithful, committed relationship or giving in and going back to the same old, same old. I said, when you lift yourself up, when you lift your decision and image up, you are going to draw onto you all manifestations that match that image. If this man is not the piece of the puzzle in that big image that you hold about the ideal relationship, which is nothing compared to anything else I've ever heard in life, it's a normal way of thinking and feeling to seek that protection, the love, the security. I said, that's normal. It's the language of the universe. If you don't hold on to that, How are you ever going to get there? So I've suggested that she invest her thoughts. Come back to your thing. While he flips the switch back into his toward taking you from that image and going and looking at his victim mentality, I said, flip the switch, come back. Yeah, I hear you. However, state your decision. I hear you, but I'm stating my decision. Now, at one point, he or she is going to have to pick up on okay, I hear it once, I hear it twice, I hear it three times, seven times. There must be something to this. Sometimes people have to hear it over and over and over and over again. We learn through repetition. So I suggested that her repeat this statement, decision over and over and over and over again until he hears it. And if he doesn't hear it, because you're not supposed to hear it through the ear, you're supposed to hear it at the level of the heart. He's supposed to get the picture. He's supposed to get the picture because your decision is an affirmation in his ears. And that affirmation is supposed to print a picture. When you describe this imagine, the imagination or vision of your marriage, that's supposed to paint a picture in his mind. But if you allow his speech, it will paint a picture in your mind. So whose speech is going to win? Now you might say, well, can I go and manifest him? Listen, at this point, it's already a struggle. You've already struggled in the relationship. Why would you even try to manifest? What are you trying to manifest? If he hasn't heard you, if he hasn't seen other things, is it even worth trying to manifest or just make a decision that you are already married? If he's for you, who can be against that? But if he's not for you, then to be for you is to speak the language of heaven or of your desire and if he's not speaking the language he's not for you so what are you going to do here's what you the, you have two th two options the choice is to stand on your decision no matter what or you can go and create a new concept of him you pay the price to stand and wait for another or to create a new assumption of him either way you have to pay the price you have to think about what's the price I want to pay. Because at this point, he's outside of you. And I believe that everyone, nobody has free will. It still falls on you. You have to pay the price of changing his, uh, your concept of him. And so are you willing, disciplined, committed to pay the price? That's all you have to do. Which price is best to pay? To change your conception of him and wait or wait for another? Now you can check your heart. And this is all coming back to you. And you say, all right. You begin to think of them in a different way. And if they have more pluses than minuses, then maybe you can pay the price. If not, then you say, no, I cannot pay the price. Look at their habits. Look at their lifestyle. Look at their goals. Look at their vision, their purpose in life. How committed are they? What's your conversations like outside of this matter? And is he there or she always there for you? What do you, what do you appreciate? What do you put value and worth in? Is communication important to you? The five languages of love. What is important to you? Has that been exhibited in the relationship up this far? One of the things that she mentioned was that on Christmas, she only received a necklace and she bought him more gifts. And I said, you are a giver. You have to learn to receive, to put yourself into the feminine side and receive. And I said, the way you receive that imaginal act, that scene that you've created in the mind, I said, is by standing firmly on it. And whoever is your soulmate or the mate of this picture that fits this picture will come running. 
And so I always encourage clients to stand on their decision or affirmation. And then as you stand on the affirmation, you keep giving the same story, the same story. You're trying to paint a picture in their mind, not the other way around. So this is how you invest. You have an opportunity to, to speak into existence over and over again, over and over again with this partner. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. Not only you're giving it to him or her, but you're putting it into the universe and you're saying it over and over and over and over again. That's investment. When you go and talk about the victim mentality and back and forth, that's what you're putting out into the universe. So the secret to overcoming a situation or to winning somebody over is to always stand on your decision and paint the picture in their mind. And if they're not painting the picture, sometimes that's all you can do. So we create our own reality, but remember, when you stand on your decision and you keep repeating it over and over and over again to your partner, it's like putting it into the universe. So hold on to your decision and things are going to happen. Time and space will bend to conform to your ideal. No, time doesn't solve problems. That's not what I said. But the energy that you put and what you focus on, that's what's being created and everything else being, it's getting dissolved, right? The wheat is the wheat and the shaft will fall away. And so that's the fruit. That's the desire and decision that you have. You hold on to that. To you, that is more solid than what it is right now. And um, that's what will become a reality for you. I encourage women to always make decisions, um, not from a place of playing games, hard to win, hard to get, um, but from a place of confidence and not allow um, the other partner's comments as, oh, you're insecure, oh, you don't love yourself, oh, uh, this and that and this and the other. Flip those around and say, no, I am insecure. No, I know who I want. I know what I want. I know who I am. I know what I like. Always in your mind, flip it around, flip it around. Don't allow it to affect your energy because the way you take these in, you're going to take these, th these things in into the next relationship. So either you stay in this relationship, no one thing, the way you end up a relationship, you will start the next one. And so if you make a decision now, that's how you're going to start the next relationship. Or if they rise in consciousness and awareness of that, which you say and see within, then that's how you start your new next relationship. You should be starting your next... Okay, so let me put it this way. When you stand on your decision, they have to conform. If they don't conform because you stand on your decision, if the relationship ends, right? You're going to start the next relationship with this decision. So your decision, you need to stand on your decision no matter what. Ladies, stand on your decision no matter what. Either he or she will conform or the next person you'll attract according to that decision. Don't let go of your desire. That's key. That's important. So there's no games to play. There's no hard to get. No, no, no. You become more memorable when you're confident in that way. So the way you end up a relationship, you're going to start the next one. So if you made a decision in this one to be married, either they conform or you're going to attract the equivalent of it. Um, I was listening to John Martini, and um, quite interesting. It was a couple of days ago and it was on the subject of law of attraction. And I was intrigued enough to go and do a little bit of research on him. And in one particular video, he talked about his wife passing away. And he wasn't heartbroken. And the reason for that is because he said, I know that when a person departs, all the qualities in that person are going to be dispersed in other people. He said, all of a sudden, I would have a friend call me and want to talk a lot more with me, just like me and my wife used to talk. Another friend would hug me a little longer, just like my wife used to hug me. Then I would have a friend that would bring me food, just like my wife used to cook it. You see, his wife's qualities were dispersed and brought out from other people. 
And no, it wasn't all her qualities in one person, but all her qualities were being dispersed in other people. And so he never felt her loss. And so I know as women and men, we have this tendency to say, well, I like Mary, I like John, I like Brian, I like Scott, because Scott is funny, he has money, she can, um, he can take me on trips, he has the money, he doesn't have the money. And we begin to take parts and, and try to put them in one ideal person. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But you've got to check your underlying motive as to why you want these things. If you're coming from, I can never get them myself. I'm desperate and I need to have them. Then you're not going to manifest them. But when you come from a place of comfort, peace, love, and joy, and I know this is what peace, love, comfort, and joy looks like and sounds like and feels like to me, and you have the faith and belief behind that, then you're going to attract that in one person. So what I would encourage you if you're my client in this time, in this position, I would say there's nothing to lose. Here's one thing I always say. There's nothing lost. There's no such thing. It's just misplaced. Your partner has his thoughts misplaced. You stand with clarity on your decision. And you're calling out of the universe, which includes him or her, you're calling a match to your decision. There's nothing lost. If it's not him or her, it's going to be somebody else that matches or the equivalent of. A, a thing that I had advised my client was to be careful because she's if the relationship breaks apart, she's going to have the equivalent of the qualities in him this um, revealed through other people. And so she will never miss him in a way. And you don't have to go into missing or grieving because you might love the person. You can say, I know that the qualities that I've seen in him are going to be dispersed through other friends that are, I have around. So you're never alone. You never lost anything. So let's understand how we work with energy and how energy works. And um, I realize that there's no loss in the divine mind. You're never going to lose when you hold on to your decision. And only your decision comes to reality. In your world, you are the creator of your own reality. And what you are saying is, I've decided to create something better. And who can stand against me? If I am one with my decision, who can stand against me? And so that is the only thing that I would encourage you to do. All right. From decision to decision to decision to decision. Um, and that is how you progress and evolve in life. And you achieve those goals that right now they seem so far away, hard to get. Um, there's nothing to break over, cry over, understand that it's either misplaced, their energy is misplaced, and it takes somebody to be clear and standing. And understand that uh, in the universe, there's already an identical, equal to um, the equivalent of all the good in this partner. But it's up to you to manifest this relationship or stand on a decision and say him her or another at this point it really doesn't matter so that is a decision you have to make ultimately because it is your life so thank you guys for watching um please hit the notification bell button below like share subscribe and if you want to be coached one-on-one -on -one in the private group community on facebook i would encourage you to click in the description below enter within the program Come into the Facebook private group community and that is where I teach one hour live every week. I take your questions, I answer them and you can get um, a strategy plan. I map out some things for you or I just answer questions to bring you more clarity. All right. Thank you for being here with much gratitude. This is Luminita. Bye now.